Imagine a flying creature so massive that it dwarfed modern-day humans, a pterosaur with wings spanning as long as a small aircraft. This was Quetzalcoatlus, the largest known flying animal to have ever lived. But how did it hunt? Did it actually fly? And what role did it play in its prehistoric ecosystem? Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of Quetzalcoatlus, one of the most awe-inspiring creatures of the late Cretaceous. The story of Quetzalcoatlus began in 1971, when paleontologist Douglas Lawson, a graduate student at the time, unearthed its fossil remains in Big Bend National Park in Texas. What he found shocked the scientific community. A giant pterosaur with an estimated wingspan of over 10 meters or 33 feet, far surpassing anything that has ever been seen before. Lawson initially struggled to classify the creature as nothing quite like it had been discovered. Eventually, it was named Quetzalcoatlus Northropi, after the feathered serpent god Quetzalcoatl from the Aztec mythology and John Northrop, an aviation pioneer who helped design aircraft with similar wing structures. Quetzalcoatlus was a member of the Azarkid family, a group of pterosaurs known for their long necks, toothless beaks, and massive wingspans. But unlike earlier pterosaurs that thrived in coastal environments, Quetzalcoatlus lived inland in a semi-arid landscape filled with rivers and open plains. Its beak was long, sharp, and likely used to hunt small to medium prey, similar to how modern storks feed. However, one of the biggest mysteries surrounding Quetzalcoatlus is whether it was a true aerial predator or a terrestrial stalker that occasionally took flight. As stated before, Quetzalcoatlus belonged to the Azarkid family, a lineage that emerged during the late Cretaceous. These pterosaurs were highly adapted for their efficient soaring with hollow bones that kept their weight minimal despite their massive size. Some scientists believe that Quetzalcoatlus' ancestors were originally fish-eating coastal dwellers, but over time they evolved into land-based predators capable of covering vast distances in search of food. This adaptation allowed them to thrive in areas far away from the ocean, making them unique among other pterosaurs. Quetzalcoatlus is often cited as the largest known flying animal, with estimates placing its wingspan between 10 and 12 meters, or 33 to 40 feet. Standing on the ground, it would have reached a height similar to a giraffe, around 5 meters, or 16 feet tall. Despite its massive size, Quetzalcoatlus was surprisingly lightweight, likely weighing only 200 to 250 kilograms, or 440 to 550 pounds, thanks to its hollow bones and air-filled skeletal system. One of the debates about Quetzalcoatlus is how it lived. Some researchers believed it was an active predator, swooping down on small animals, while others argue it was more of a scavenger, using its long beak to probe for carrion. Its flight abilities are another point of contention. While earlier theories suggest it was too large to fly, more recent studies indicate that Quetzalcoatlus likely used a powerful quadrupedal launch to propel itself into the air. Once airborne, it could have soared for long distances, similar to modern condors and albatrosses. As for reproduction, we don't have any direct fossil evidence of Quetzalcoatlus's nests. But, studies of other pterosaurs suggest that they laid eggs in soft, sandy environments. Hatchlings were likely precocial, meaning that they could walk and even possibly fly shortly after birth. Quetzalcoatlus remains one of the most mysterious and awe-inspiring creatures of the Mesozoic. Whether it was an airborne predator, a scavenger, or something in between, its sheer size and unique adaptations make it one of the most extraordinary animals to have ever lived. While new discoveries may one day refine our understanding, one thing is certain, Quetzalcoatlus was a true giant of the skies. What do you think? Was Quetzalcoatlus more of a flyer or a walker? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this dive into Quetzalcoatlus, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more prehistoric content. Until next time, keep asking questions.